What's up pilots, my name is Jesse P. Welcome back to the Tiny Whip channel and to my exclusive interview with Carl Zhao, the creator of HD Zero, where he's about to announce new HD Zero goggles, as well as talk about 90 FPS for Tiny Whips and maybe even a 2 SAIO board. But first, we had an awesome conversation about the original targets of the HD Zero project, as well as the now famous AIO5 all-in-one whoop board. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to introduce to you today a good friend of mine, Carl Zhao, the owner and creator of Devamath Incorporated, located in California, right here in the United States. This is Mr. HD Zero, the guy that made the HD revolution happen for Tiny Whoop. Thank you so much for being with us today, Carl. Oh, thank you, Jesse. You you have done a lot for the Tiny Whoop, and uh, myself is uh, I, I fly Tiny Whoop, so I thank you for what you have done for the Tiny Whoop community. Well, thank you so much. I prepared a whole bunch of questions for you. I talked to a whole bunch of my friends. I talked to mega fans of you, and I talked to uh, just giant fans of Tiny Whoop and of FPV in general. And I come up with a list of questions, and I'd love to just jump right into that. So here we go. First of all, I was wondering if you could just sort of describe in layman's terms what the HD video trans HD zero video transmission system is and how it's different from the analog system that a lot of people are used to. Yeah, HD zero works just like the analog video transmitter and uh, the cargo doesn't transmit and uh, it's it's good for group uh, events. Yeah, the when I design the HD zero, there are three design targets. The first is a fixed and a low latency. The second one is a, the video link should be fast recovery when link is down and up. The third is a motion clarity. Yeah, those three targets define HD zero is for piloting. It's not for like a cinematic. It's just for piloting. Yeah, I know a lot of people judge the video system by watching the YouTube video. But your YouTube video cannot give you the, the, the tightly connected feeling. Yeah. That, yeah. Honestly, that's easy for me to see from where I'm sitting now. I have been spending so much time behind the goggles, flying HD zero, and it's just clearly made for the pilot's experience. I'm passionate about sharing the experience of the gift of flight with people around the world. And your technology has made that so much more possible, and I'm just so grateful for it. Um, but I wanted to ask about HD Zero in particular, because it's my understanding as a layperson that the ASIC chip you developed is incredibly good at encoding and decoding HD video very quickly. Is that what makes it different than um, other systems? Yes, it's uh, it's unlike uh, DJI WorkSnail or OpenIPC. It's completely different. It's the way I choose it is, is because of the three design targets I, I, I just mentioned. With the traditional uh, encode and decode, compression, decompression, you cannot fix, you cannot get the fixed latency and the low latency. That's why I have to choose a different way. The way it's very difficult. Very few people can do that. But uh, I'm glad I, I, I have chosen the way. So that's why HD Zero is quite unique as of today. So getting to the all-in-one board, which really is the star of the show when it comes to this bind and fly. This bind and fly is about to become the most popular tiny whoop in the world. Um, there's the race edition and of course the freestyle edition. But the star of the show really is this little chip right in the middle, the all-in-one. And uh, it's the most exciting part of the build by far for me. And I just wanted to ask where the idea came from and how it all started. Yeah, that was like uh, one year ago. It's uh, in MotoGP Champs 2023 October time frame. I met Ryan Collett and uh, David Avery. They suggest the AIO that can integrate HD0 VTX. That would be a good fit for time. I come back. I talked with Jason from Happy Model, and uh, we have a great discussion, and we decided to do it. We decided to do so just because it's not easy, it's because it's hard. It's, it's very hard, yeah. <laughs> um, can you tell me what were the goals of the project? 
Was it as simple as integrating an HD0 video transmission system on board an, uh, a flight controller? Were there other goals other than that? Yeah, initially I thought just to combine those two boards together, but apparently it's not. If you have a HD0 whoop light VTX and any analog I.O., you, you will find out it's not possible to just merge them. So, but we have decided to do that, so I, I need to find a way to do it. So the, the MIPI connector you will find is the first thing it need to be go. Mm -hmm. need, need to go. So the MIPI connector is like kind of fragile and uh, bulky. It's just no room for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but removing it will have face two consequences. One, the user cannot use the current MIPI cameras. Some users will complain. The second, what to use to replace the MIPI. I know there's a HD composite video can do the video with the single line, but I don't know it's fit for the OOPS. So mm -hmm. that's why I designed the HD zero Eco VTX and an Eco camera just to verify as dear how it works in the tiny world, and uh, it's 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 become okay. Then I decide to go further. Yeah, the next challenge is the the durability. So I think we try to reduce the weight, but I think durability is my higher priority. Be just because. So you, you have two boards, one is a flight controller where the other is a HD0 VTX, the two stank, that's, that's, that's not durable, it's less durable than the single board. Mm -hmm. But the current uh, AIO, so the AIO5, it's like 14 layers PCB, it's almost as complicated as a PC motherboard. <laughs> yeah. I, I would say, I would say probably, I, I don't know, I guess it is the most complicated board in the MPV industry so far. Wow. Yeah, but anyway, I am thinking putting such a complicated board into a drone which is frequently crashed is kind of big risk. It has to be robust. I, I cannot like let people buy an expensive AIO and uh, it's easily broken. It's, it's not acceptable. Acceptable. That's why I say the durability is a top priority over even the weight. Yeah. The, the third one is the interference. You know the ESC and the EOS transmitter or receiver and the, the HD0 VTX, they all transmit. They interfere with each other. That's, it's, it's pretty challenging to separate them. Yeah, the last thing is the heat. You know the ESC and the HD0 VTX generate a lot of heat, mm -hmm. and the feed, heat affects the gyro and the UIS sensitivity badly. So I have a third, I have three iterations just to balance the heat and the, the layout. It's, it's quite a challenge in this project. It's taken me almost a year to do that. That's amazing. Yeah, and that was actually my next question. I was going to ask what were the challenges of uh, PCB layout and to uh, arrange the components of all of these different working parts in a way that they could work together harmoniously. Uh, I guess you kind of answered that question. Is there any more you can say about that? Yeah, even the layout itself, it's, it's a very... Yeah, it's not my, I, I, I cannot do that. I have people helping me do that. It's, it's very challenging. Yes, it is. So, you know, a lot of pilots out there are racing pilots. A lot of people only care about being very lightweight. Um, but I argue that I think most tiny whip pilots are not dedicated to having ultra lightweight. I think most people that are enjoying tiny whip flight are not at the top level of racing. They're probably flying around their home. They're enjoying the trees in their backyard. And both of these cameras improve that uh, immensely. So I'm kind of curious, how popular, how successful do you expect this project to be 
um, versus analog systems that are already existing out there? Well, it's even with this I.O., it still have more weight and uh, more expensive than the analog. You can get an analog group under 15 grams easily. But with this IL, you can probably get a little bit less than 19. It's still a bit heavy for whoop racers. Yeah, but for most people, uh, I think image quality is kind of important to them. And because this one is uh, our BNF is a little bit over 19 grams, it flies very well if you try it already. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah, it's unbelievable. I mean, I think that, like I say, 19, 20, 21 grams, just a little while ago, that was normal. That was the standard, you know, and we were looking at HD0 tiny whoops that were much heavier, maybe seven, eight grams heavier than that. Uh, the ultralight revolution is recent, and it's not for everybody. In fact, it's for the few elite top of the racing scene. And the racing scene is a very small part of the tiny whoop scene. So um, I personally believe that um, HD0 is paving the way for the new standard um, when it comes to the audio video side of um, tiny whoop. Um, I wanted to ask you, do you think 90 FPS will ever be possible for tiny whoop. Oh yeah, definitely it's possible, uh, but it won't be easy. The current, the composite HD, it's a 60 frame per second, but I think I have a way to make it 90 hertz, but it's all depend on the demand. Uh, it won't be easy, but definitely it's possible. Wow, that is super exciting news. <laughs> Well, uh, a few of my other questions are regarding products. Do you think there could ever be an all-in-one board for 2S? Uh, yes. I, you know, I'm an idiot <laughs> on this kind of thing. And basically, I'm, I'm counting on the community to tell me what to do. Every time I went to the race event and meet with people, and they will suggest me, they will advise me, then I... I, I take it as a homework. <laughs> yeah, I will go back. But back to the question, two ways like uh, AIO is to me is kind of uh, should be an easy one and a quick one. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, my next question is um, one of the problems. One of the you know, you mentioned that sometimes cost is a barrier of entry uh, when it comes to moving or switching over to HD and enjoying all the benefits of HD0, particularly when it comes to the goggles. Um, HD0 goggles are my daily driver. I use them every single day. They're my favorite goggles. And to me, they're one of the most important products that has ever come to the FPV community. But they are expensive, and they probably should be expensive. But I'm curious if you think there could ever be another lower-priced um, but quality, uh, excuse me, I'm curious if you ever think there could be a cheaper version of the HD0 goggles, maybe a box goggles, but something with really good reception, maybe four antennas. Uh, yes, thank you, Jesse. I'm working on it and uh, for a while. Uh, yes, I, I know the HD0 goggles is kind of expensive. Yeah, yes, I'm, I'm working on a, a cheaper one, but it's, yeah. That's terrific news. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is wonderful. It should be released and I'm not, saying, yeah. I'm not saying HD0 goggles are overpriced. I know that they're not. I know that the quality and the craftsmanship is more than worth the money. I would have paid much more for my HD0 goggles, no question. They're just too important to me. They're a part of my body. They're a part of who I am. I oh, love those things. Thank you, Jesse. It's, it's true. It's true. No, thank you, Jesse. Hey guys, Jesse from the future, just butting in very quickly. I have to apologize because I was being so much of a fanboy, I didn't even recognize how significant that announcement was. Carl just said he's been working for a long time on a new set of HD Zero goggles, and I was actually talking over him just now when he said they're releasing soon. Sorry about that. This is a huge announcement for the Tiny Whip community because if you've ever tried to get people to fly Tiny Whoops, you know that the two biggest complaints are crappy analog video and a high cost to get into it. This is a single product that's going to take a lot of heat out of both of those complaints. So I actually went back to Carl and asked him about it 
And I, I said, is this where you really want to announce this product? He said, yes, this is the announcement of the product. But he asked me to not share any other details, so I'm going to respect his wishes. But still, a very exciting announcement. And yeah, there it is. Sorry about that. Let's get back to the interview. All right, for my next question. Now that you have squeezed the entire HD0 video transmission system onto an all-in-one board, do you think it's possible to make a smaller standalone VTX that could be used in custom builds with other flight controllers? Um, do you know what I mean? Could you make a smaller um, HD0 VTX uh, now that you've reduced the, the real estate that those components need? Yes, definitely, it's it should be doable, but I'm not thinking of that until now. Yeah, yes, but I'm listening, and uh, yeah, I'm listening. If there's a demand, I will make it. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I can tell you're listening, and I it's it's so obvious because you go to a lot of the big events, and I've seen you at Multi GPIO several <laughs> times. We've had a great time. I was actually just looking at video from the last IO. And you and me and Ryan hanging out at the bar was so much fun. <laughs> I was laughing so hard. Um, right, that, that was definitely my happy time. So uh, me too. It's so great to meet you. And yes, me seriously, too. I, that was my party time, my happy times. <laughs> it was good. It was very good. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Carl, I just want to say it means so much to me that you took time to coordinate our schedules. We're in different parts of the world, and I know that you don't do a lot of interviews, and I feel so lucky to get to talk to you, and I feel so lucky to get to use the technology that you've brought to the community I brought together. It's just been a real privilege, and thank you so much, Carl. Yes, thank you, Jess. Give me the chance. My pleasure. Guys, thanks for sticking with me to the end of my awesome interview with Carl Zhao. Thank you so much for joining me, Carl. And I want to know if there's any other questions you guys think I should have asked. Put them down below and I will ask and I'll answer them in the comments. Also, who else would you like me to interview? I got a huge range of contacts after the last nine years. I'll interview anybody you guys want me to. Let me know in the comments down below and we'll see you guys in the next one.